new house purchased, superior abode moved into, home studio constructed, new radio station acquired, overwhelming workload completed, atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed, competent American president installed, polarity of neutron flow reversed, requisite children sacrificed, supplications to the devil threshold reached, Metal Empire Interviews podcast successfully reactivated. You're listening to Metal World Radio. Friends, Romans, Metalheads, lend me your ears. You're listening to Metal Empire Interviews. My name is RJ Bailey, your mildly tolerable and semi-competent host. After a good 30-week break, good gracious me, Metal Empire Interviews is back. And boy, do we have a stormer for you. I say we, I. I have a stormer for you. Although we, actually, now I think about it, there's two people involved in an interview. You don't just interview yourself. Sorry about the break there everyone. Uh, What happened? Well, basically, I got an an enormous amount of work in over Christmas and on the run-up to Christmas as a voice actor, um, mainly an audiobook narrator, but there was other VO work as well. And if you want to check out my uh, audiobooks, feel free to do so at rjbailey.com. Also, Do a search if you want to for Bailey's Bookshelf, my other podcast, which has come to life. Uh, Bailey's Bookshelf, great audiobooks, where I just do a free, professionally produced and narrated version of The War of the Worlds for your listening pleasure, should you uh, wish to hear that. Maybe you've never read the classic. I mean, you should. You should read it. It's, It's extremely... It's one of the most important books ever written for a reason, and it's absolutely banging. But also, uh, you know, if you just want to have something on the background, if you've experienced it before and just want to listen to it, then it's there for you for free. F- please do head along. I apologize. I shouldn't be advertising the podcast right at the start of uh, this one coming back to life. So, yeah, um, I've had a massive amount of work to do, uh, which I on the run up to Christmas, on the run up to Christmas, additionally, we got uh, we decided that the house, uh, well, it was more of a villa. It was either, it's called a flat, villa flat, you know, because it's quite a large ground floor flat with um, front garden, back garden. Uh, you would you would think it's a house to look at it, but there's the uh, rooms above are a different flat. Anyway, we decided that was too small for us. What with lockdown, what with me having worked from home as a VO for uh, the last, coming up to six years now, and what with uh, my wife, uh working from home due to the pandemic and that not going to be changing um that's that's a new normal now that she'll get to work from home and come in uh, very occasionally should she wish to we were like look this is too small i had a hobby room in that house which became her office that was too small and self-indulgent to have a hobby room so we moved slightly out of the city we've moved over to the county of fife to a small village uh from edinburgh uh the house is at least uh twice as big going on for probably 2.5 times as big i've got a separate building for a recording studio now where i make my audio books and i've got a, a hobby room attached in that building as well so yeah we decided to move house it was a botched house move as well thanks to the solicitors um make not our solicitors our buyer solicitors making massive uh, errors um which may you know doesn't help the stress levels and then after that uh after we got moved in and deal dealt with all the stress like massive amounts of stress there was like a boulder of stress inside me massive boulder of stress and i just had to take many baths and many video game sessions and many warhammer 40,000 painting sessions to just chip away, chip away slowly at that boulder of stress because my depression wasn't good and it was affecting my diabetes as well. Also, 
I have to work. And my kind of work, I can't just do it on a desk. You know, if you work from home, you can most jobs working from home, you can feasibly do it on your lap in the living room. You know, as long as you got a laptop. Me, I need a recording space. I need sound treated. So uh, I spent a, a couple of months probably, or a month and a half, building a, a studio a uh, acoustically treated studio in the uh, in the building in the garden um it's kind of like a shack it's like a hut i sound treated it all i built from scratch acoustic panels uh out of timber and insulation and garden fleece and burlap sacks um i constructed a partition wall in it uh this was all huge amounts of diy i'd never attempted before as well but let me tell you if you're gonna take on a project like that a do it you can i believe in you if i can make a pretty fucking banging sound studio sound you know recording studio then you certainly can as well and b b got quite a nice collection of tools now because you're like right need some of that need some of that and now i feel much more well equipped to take on diy things around the house so yeah that's that and, I, and then i had to set up my hobby room as well because that's a genuine source of uh relief to me when it comes to my uh depression um so i that was actually a, you know it's a treatment it's a therapy and i need my treatment i need my therapy so i had to set that hobby room up as well and then i had loads of work uh come in uh, that I needed to deal with. There was some hangover audiobook work that I took care of as well in the recording session. Uh, I did some work for Brilliance Audio, which are a massive audiobook company, which I was thrilled by, and I'm eternally grateful they caught, they contacted me about that because they needed someone who could do a Yorkshire accent, right? A story with a lot of it set in Whitby, and guess what? I've been to Whitby every bloody, almost every bloody year since, well, you know, for quite some time now, apart from during the pandemic, obviously. We like it so much, that's where I, I proposed to my wife. Uh, in the graveyard where Dracula's set. Because we bloody love uh, a bit of horror, horror. We love horror, us. We love horror movies. We love horror books. Sorry, horror books. We love uh, horror music. A lot of, be lot of heavy... Well, she don't like horror music. I like horror music because a lot of horror music is heavy metal, isn't it? Anyway, I was profoundly grateful to uh, have to get called up by one of the super big boys. You know, they make audible originals and stuff. Woo-wee! That's good people to be in with. Um, and then I had to batter through a load of work. And once that was done, I was like, you know what? There was a big hard drive crash, right, last year. Lost a lot of work. Had to contact a lot of my clients saying, can you send me the audiobook that I sent you because I don't have it anymore? Well, which was nice, but I lost um, a lot of my War of the Worlds work, which I hadn't even published. So I thought, you know what? I'm in the new studio. Let's break this bad boy in with a passion project of mine. I finally got time for it to, you know, and I will release the legendary War of the Worlds as an audiobook project. And um, I want to say thank you so much to those who have left written reviews as well. I, uh, Brew from Down Who. Uh, listening to the show on Mixcloud, mixcloud.com forward slash RJ Bailey of the radio show Metal Empire, which goes out on Metal World Radio Live. He's left a review because he enjoyed it, and I thank him so much for that. few other people have left reviews. So, uh, yeah, uh, I got I just needed to get that done. Just needed to get it out of my system, you know? Got to get it out there. And, and then once you're out of the groove with Metal Empire interviews... It's just like, it's easy to get out of the groove. And then like, you know, I think I think it's this concept called creative debt where like the idea of tackling something, the longer you leave it, grows into a, a an apparently more surmountable, ta uh, insurmountable task. A greater mountain grows from this, uh, what would have been a pebble while you were in the groove. Suddenly it seems like a hardship, a challenge. Not so much to do it, because I know I can do it, and I enjoy it, and I, I think this is a good show. I think it's a good podcast. Even this, like, nonsense waffle is, you know, possibly entertaining. I've had, so, you know, some pe one person has said, I, I just want a stream of consciousness podcast uh, by you. <laughs> um, which he, uh, which I, I would, yeah, no one would listen to that one, would they? This one only gets figures because it's got, like, you know, 
Wolf Hoffman from Accept who promote who promoted his episode and stuff. Um and Brittany Slays from Unleash the Archers. Uh but you know, I think it's good stuff. So it wasn't so much creating it, it was more more just sitting down and doing it, you know, just getting out of the habit. And then yeah, I'm over I'm over emphasizing and over stressing the point. I'm over explaining it. Um it, it, you know exactly what I'm talking about already. So we're back. Metal Empire interviews. And this one is... At, I intended to get back on track, by the way, with the Epica interview. However, with Simone Simons. However, I just didn't do it. I just didn't get around to it in time. Uh, until I did this one with Andy Derris from Halloween. And I li- and Halloween's just got their new album out, Halloween. It's quite the spectacle. It's roaring up the uh, charts, I believe. And it's got fantastic reviews. Many people calling it the best album since Keeper of the Seven Keys Part 1 and 2. For me, but it's the best album since Keeper of the Seven Keys Part 1, which I hold to be their finest album. The- and it- that is qu- that is a sem- that's That's not just like me going, oh, yeah. Um, Grand Magus' finest album is Hammer of the North, which is you, let's not be let's not get it you know get it twisted. That's a that's a phenomenal album. That's a flawless album. That's one of the greats. But Halloween's Keeper of the Seven Keys parts one and two, when you say as good as that, that's like saying you know a new album from Black Sabbath is as good as uh, War Pigs. You know. It's like saying it's as good as an a genuinely seminal album that's very influential and and Master of the Seven Keys, uh, Keeper of the Seven Keys, uh, <laughs> and Keeper of the Rings apparently, which was Andy Derris's first. Now, um, Keeper of the Seven Keys uh, genuinely set the template for a whole subgenre. My most beloved subgenre, subgenre of all. Power metal, it's gen and it's as good. As it's you know it is, it is amazing. Okay, and to say, to say that their new albums just as you know just below that one is a real mark of uh, quality for that album, as far as I'm concerned. Don't take my word for it. Not just a mark of quality because I'm saying it because I'm an idiot. But all the critics are saying it. They say it's an absolute beauty, and it really is. So I thought, and also I like to keep them timely, you know? I like to keep it timely. Epica's new album isn't new anymore. It's certainly not as new as uh, as new as new Halloween's Halloween. So I like that's, that's the format I run, basically. When I've not got an interview to do, when I'm not taking the 30-week break, <laughs> break when I've not got an interview to do, I, uh, I, you know, a brand new one, then I get withdraw one from the vaults. When I do have an interview uh, that's brand new, I get that out sharpish, so it's timely and can ha- give the band a boost. Not that bloody Halloween needs a boost, but still, it's timely. You know what, actually? If it does give them a boost, I'm delighted. Maybe it will. Maybe in some small fractional way it will. And all of heavy metal n- needs that. Heavy metal is often uh, a lot of people who had just got their head in the sand, the heavy metal universe only. Gamma Ray reference didn't even mean to. Uh, Gamma Ray, of course, formed by Kai Hansen, originally uh, singer of Halloween on the first album, Walls of Jericho guitarist thereafter until keeper part two departed to create gamma ray now back in halloween as co-lead singer in and guitarist in the album halloween anyway people who have got their head stuck in that bubble and only listen to that kind of music because they've got and only participate in that culture because they've got no like breadth of character Right, no other interests beside heavy metal. They're like, Bleh. you know, we're riddled with people going, oh, Metallic, Metallica's mainstream, mate. Metallica's pop music. Oh, Slayer, Slayer's more like hard rock. Piss off, mate. No heavy metal is mainstream. He- nothing in heavy metal is mainstream. Heavy metal is not a mainstream genre. It might seem it to you, right? 
because that's that your breadth of vision is just like that goldfish bowl you look at the you're in the goldfish bowl right the water is heavy metal and the largest fish in there is metallica and you go oh that's massive mate because you're only looking you're only in that fish bowl now because you're a little fish a little minnow a little uh you're more like kelp mate anyway uh, if you are a glorious eagle, like us multi, uh, multi-genre uh, enjoyers are, then you'll know that that's just a small fish bowl, okay? As you're soaring over the landscape of pop culture, of society, of general culture, really. That's just, a, you look down, you'll go, yeah, there are big fish in that fish bowl, but that fish bowl is off to the side in that little, in that little cave over there. It's it's tucked away in a crevice. In a not in a crevasse, that's quite big, but a crevice. And you'll look else and you'll go, Yeah, foo fighters, who people wouldn't class as heavy metal at all, generally, hard rock. Like that dwarfs Metallica and like ev- most people. It, like nearly all of <laughs> probably all nearly all of heavy metal combined, you know? Um, and then you look at pop music, you know, you're not getting heavy metal in the charts, my dudes, not even Metallica, uh, is like setting the charts on fire unless they've got a new album out, which, you know, sticks around for a while, but you know, they're not, they're not dominating the charts exactly with every single they put out. So, yeah. So if this podcast, <laughs> getting, but remembering my own point, if this little podcast can give heavy metal, you know, Halloween, large as they are uh, within this fishbowl, a boost, which it, it could do, it maybe it could do a little tiny, tiny, tiny one, then I'm delighted and I hope it does that. Anyway, this uh, interview is absolutely bonkers. I don't want to preface it, but... I get, you know, on the main show, I maybe I gave the game away a little bit on the radio show and I talked about the most bizarre of things that we discussed and I talked about it quite a lot because I thought it'd get people to listen to it because people, people would go, they talked about what, mate? They talked about what? Um, but I won't do it now because you're here anyway. You're going to listen to it anyway. So no point ruining any of the surprises and the particularly bizarre conversation that we had. So I'll just let Andy Derris take it away, shall we? I do. Thank you so much to the Chadwick 9000 as well at Nuclear Blast Records uh, for sorting me out a a copy of Halloween, the album, far before uh, release. Uh, It was a joy to listen to. Um, And uh, thank you as well for setting this interview up. And thank you as well for um, allowing me to play the music of the bands that I interview from Nuclear Blast Records. I appreciate that permission. Okay. I'm not sure what to play. Uh, I've got my two favourite songs from Halloween. Do you know what? I'll play... How many tracks have we got on the Halloween album? Four's a piss take, isn't it? That's half an album. I'm not doing that. That's a joke. You've got to go and listen to the album if you want to hear it. Let's have a look here, sport. How many tracks? Okay, on the uh, edition, which is on uh, Spotify, there's 14 tracks. Four wouldn't be terrible to play, but I'll play you some of my... I'll play you three tracks, okay? I'm going to lead in with this absolute beauty. It's one of the singles and it sums up my attitude, you know, the time I was having while interviewing Mr. Derris. It's uh, it's a joyous song. It's the kind of song that Halloween is known for. This is, and I hope you're going to have it too, with the 55 minute, 44 second interview, Best Time.
should trigger my mind I had a bad trip, gotta push myself back on the line Yes, I know I'm gonna be alright I'm feeling better in the neon light Friends, Romans, metalheads, lend me your ears. Halloween set the template for my most beloved of subgenres, what people call power metal. It's my honour to interview the man that has been the voice of that band for almost 30 years and over 11 albums. He's the master of the rings who keeps the legacy of the seven keys alive. When you're feeling down in the dumps and on a particularly dark ride, it's this man's overwhelmingly positive lyrics and music which can make you come alive, rise without chains of sadness and despair, and make you feel indestructible, sending you into orbit and giving you the best time. That perfect gentleman is, of course, Mr. Andy Derris. How are you doing, sir? Thank you very much. Super good. <laughs> we, we've just been talking about poo-poo, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Nice introduction for an interview, isn't it? <laughs> A too good story not to tell. <laughs> I might have to include. I might have to snip that bit out and include that in to, as a bonus after credit special there at the end. The poo poo story. Yeah, that's Unbelievable. amazing. <laughs> um, so um, it's you, you look like you're having a very nice time there, smoking a, a large uh, cigar, um, which looks far too uh, masculine for myself. After I had a big cigar to celebrate something recently. And at the end of it, I just was feeling sick, like, oh, God, but got like a little whitey and had to go and throw up. What's the secret to not throwing up after a cigar? Well, I think uh, practice. Yeah. <laughs> Constant practice, years. <laughs> I, um, I, I was thinking to myself the other day after that, I'm going to have to smoke more cigars so I don't kill myself. And then I was like, hold on a second. <laughs> Am I slightly killing myself by smoking cigars anyway? <laughs> well, the, the matter of fact, you have 
you have to choose being a singer, cigarettes are definitely more damaging uh-huh. because they pass the vocal cords. Uh, puffing a cigar is not so damaging the vocal cords because it doesn't pass the vocal cords because you don't inhale. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless, you're completely right. It's, it's definitely just uh, changing one shit with the other. <laughs> oh, we're back to shit again. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, be- better lighting a cigar on fire than lighting uh, your poo on fire. Yes. Which, you, uh... have to, you have to tell the people the story now in two sentences. <laughs> <laughs> So how is life there? It's very good, thank you. Very warm, despite being in Scotland. Probably nowhere near as warm as you are, though. In Tenerife, oh, 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 are you? Oh, oh. You, you will probably, you, you would win, definitely, because we only have around about 22 degrees now. Uh huh. It's cloudy. It probably starts to rain every minute. <laughs> and, and we are all super happy that it's the way it is, because we haven't had rain since around about three and a half, four weeks. Yeah. Wow. That must be tough. So finally, yeah. No, like but, genuinely, that that would get to me. I, if I get too hot, I just get grumpy, I'm tired, you know, I just get annoyed all the time. So it must be a blessed relief for you. You're a Scotsman, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you worry, that's why we have so many Scottish people over here. I think in, in my, not close, but three, four houses far away, like further away. Really? Scotland. This is Scott. I think uh, uh, in, in my little village are three families, Scottish families. Wow. On, only one, only one English family, two German families, two or three French, Italians, and the rest is Spanish. Very but cosmopolitan. Scots love it. The Scots love it here. North side Tenerife is never hot. Never. Really? It's everlasting spring, but it's not everlasting summer. That so sounds like my kind of place, I have to say. That's why I'm saying you'll probably be happy over here because yeah. it's Scottish. And it's so much like mountains. We've got like two different mountain sides over here. So, yeah. Oh, man. Cool. I love hill walking. I love walking my dogs up the hills. So that sounds. You would love it. Yeah, you yeah. Would. It's all nature reserve. So, yeah. And, but oh, you're, allowed, you're, allowed with, you, you're allowed with your dog. No problem. But don't do it the way that, that German guy did it back, back like three, three years back. He had to shit. <laughs> shit in the wood. <laughs> He shat, he shat in the wood, and believe it or not, he wiped his ass and lit the paper. Oh, for God, why? Nobody knows. Maybe he wanted to cook his poo, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to imagine, I mean, half, half, of, the, half of the wood burned down. <laughs> he was cooking thing. his poo. Yeah, and, and he, well, for whatever reason, he lit his he lit the, the, the paper, and there, there the wood goes, you know? <laughs> that is insane. That is absolutely insane. Yeah. But you know what happened? What? They put him in jail. Well, I mean, to be fair, like, you've yeah. got to be more responsible. Probably killed I'm, a lot of animals. I mean, you know, we are all stupid, but that much stupidity, stupidity has to be punished. <laughs> yeah, you need putting away from society <laughs> for society's <laughs> own safety, really. Yeah. Cook my poo in the wood. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's yeah. insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah. It's like three years ago. God. It was unbelievable, man. It's... It, was... it sounds like what? it. I... <laughs> 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 yeah, but that story still goes around in the press over here because even three years later, everybody's still shaking his head in his <laughs> video. How, how can you like your shoe? Your, your... <laughs> Yeah, I'm boom. definitely going to be telling all my friends about it. So now it's yeah. going to be spreading around my part of Scotland as well. True story. <laughs> it was, was in the papers everywhere. I mean, it was even in the German paper. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, they have this bloody build that's like the British sun. Sure. And and it made it even in the in the in, on the on the on the main on the on the main page. That's crazy. Somewhere left in the corner, but at least on the main page, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> that is mad. Man, that is a shame that you never live down, is it? He will no. never that's gonna follow him for the rest of his yes, life. I mean, even when he I think next next year he's gonna be released, so I think <laughs> he better change his name. <laughs> All the tough prisoners in there like I'm in for murder, what are you in for, mate? For lighting my poo. <laughs> <laughs>
I burnt down a forest by setting my shit on fire. <laughs> my shit on fire, exactly. There's a Halloween song in there, surely, somewhere. <laughs> oh, good, and now that you mention it. <laughs> this shit is on fire. <laughs> yeah. Well... That's a nice play of words. This shit is on fire. <laughs> they mean it literally. That's another story. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I guess oh. I better crack on with the interview instead of talking about yeah, poo okay. with you all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> no, no, I'm enjoying it. I've never spoken to someone, uh, interviewed someone, and we've just immediately started talking about poo. Never mind poo being lit on fire. Never in my life. Well, it always has to be a first time. <laughs> True. <laughs> As I'm sure a forest burning down by flaming plop is probably a first time as well. It's definitely some, something like metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just, I just hope he was not a fellow metalhead. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would bring shame to the genre, definitely. Yes. <laughs> 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 right, I'll uh, I'll crack on if I can keep a straight face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, basically, three years ago, where Andy lives, uh, there was there's a beautiful mountain range with uh, forests on it, and a gentleman, um, one of his fellow countrymen, uh, went into the forest, did a poo, wiped his ass as a civilized person does. But as a barbarian does, he then <laughs> lit the poo-poo paper on fire, igniting his shit, and also igniting the rest of the forest, burning it down. The man yeah. has been in prison for about three years now due to setting yeah. poo on fire and a forest. Exactly. Madness. So there, there's the story we were talking about. Probably be released uh, next year, and uh, I'm 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 sure he has to change his name. Yeah. <laughs> to get back to Germany. He should definitely change his name. So Absolutely. I'll, if he if he, if he doesn't want to to live for the rest of his life with the nickname the the poo poo man or something. <laughs> yeah. like that. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so. <Jerusalem. laughs> So the new album is out. It's called Halloween, which I like. The pro Usually, I don't like it when bands are like four albums deep and then they do a self-titled album, like Metallica or something. I'm like, look, call your first album Metallica or don't do it at all. However, <laughs> on this album, you've reunited with, um, or united with the two previous singers from the band's 37-year history, Kai yeah. Hansen and uh, Michael Kisk. Um, which is which is why it's simply called Halloween, and why I actually really like it because it is the ultimate Halloween album, so to speak. It's called the Pumpkins United lineup. That's what the press are calling it. Is that a name yeah. you guys use yourself? Yeah, we actually loved it on on the posters when it came to the tour. So Pumpkins United seemed like something not only for the band but for the for the people out there itself. I thought uh -huh. it was genius because there were so many. Rockers in my age and even older. Is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and also the, the youngsters. So, um, as, as you may have seen, we have three generations in the concert hall. Mm -hmm. And so this is also Pumpkins United for the people because, yeah. you know, um, through the decades I had to see that we brought in so many young, young people, but the old guard mm -hmm. was, uh, not so tense spread it. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> So, <laughs> and uh, now with Michael and Kai back, the old guard is going back to the concert hall as well. So mm -hmm. it's it's also kind for the people out there. It's it's definitely Pumpkins United, not only sure. for the band. So when you refer to the old guard, are you talking about the people who just listened up to say the Keepers Part Two, um, up or or, or you even know. older, like people people who's I, I I do I do know lots of fellow metalheads over here on my on my island. Mm -hmm. um, these these guys grew up with the walls of Jericho. Yeah. And yeah. when Michael Kiska came into the band, they were like going like, oh, betrayed the metal. It's not metal anymore. And we yeah. want to have that, that power metal from the walls of Jericho, which I, 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 I totally understand, even though I don't agree. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's OK. I mean, you know, but uh, these guys even come back and, and, and 
went to the concert and were like completely blown away. Not only from, from Kai, but also sure. from Michael, even mm-hmm. myself. So, um, yeah, it seemed, seemed the right move. Yeah, yeah. Um, do, do, did you have a similar experience when you joined in 94, I think it was? That's certainly when Master of the Rings came out. Yeah. Um, did you have a similar experience by people going, ah, no, we want Michael back. We don't like this oh, new yeah. guy, Andy. Yeah, yeah, lots of, lots of. Uh-huh. It was pre- pretty much the same game that, that Michael Kiska had to go through yeah. until finally when, when, when Keeper won hit gold and platinum, then the voices disappeared, so sure. to say. Sure. Then again, then again, as, as we all, um, in, in discussions and talks, we, we realized, no, it, these voices never disappeared, but they're just being overruled. Sure. By proven many, wrong. Yeah. People liked the, the new stuff mm-hmm. than disliked. And uh, I, I think the, pretty much the same thing happened when, when we when we released the Master of the Rings. Mm. In the beginning, there was lots of woo and bah and Michael Kiska is much better, blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, when the Master of the Rings came out, there were so many people who were into the Master of the Rings. Pretty much the same story with the Keeper One. Actually, we went gold and platinum, and uh, these people were just overruled. Mm, yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, and I completely understand. When 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 singers change in bands that I liked, I was the first one who went like, "Ooh, I don't like that." <laughs> <laughs> also, understandable, absolutely. How did you cope with that? Because that must have been. It sounds like that would be something that would affect your mental health to know that almost like it was they were against you, and obviously like it must have been, you know, quite unpleasant to to have to have to deal with that when you shouldn't really have to. Yeah, but when when you count with it from beginning on, it's not mm. a surprise. I mean, right. it, it's it's definitely it's a logical thing to happen. I mean, yeah. even every new singer in a band should should know what comes. I mean, he's getting he's getting bullshit from all the sides. Sure. Um, and again, I, I completely understand for very understandable reason because I would one would be one of the first guys booing and mooing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, no, not not a surprise for me. So I was prepared. Um, Yes, we had we had a big stomach ache going on in Halloween back in '94 mm. because you did not know if the band would ever get back to the track where they used to be or where they belonged to. Sure. Um, fortunately, for me, egoistic speaking now, egoistically speaking, um, they released a Pink Bubbles Go Ape and a Chameleon album, yeah. which were not received very good out mm. there in the world. So my standing became from zero to hero after the Master of the Rings was released. Sure. Um, because probably we went off definitely 99%, I think, because we went back to metal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Chameleon was a more, what's the right description, hard rock, pop metal? Yeah, yeah. Thing. It's, they both, um, I think Chameleon and um, uh, Pink Bubble, both, both to me sound quite like Van Halen albums, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, having listened to them this past week, um, because they both got that that kind of party vibe yeah, going yeah. on. That might uh, be. I I I told Michael Weikert back in the day um, when we'd been in Hamburg sitting together listening to the Chameleon album because I'm friend with him since 1985. Sure. And he gave me to listen to everything they did, and I was in a successful band called Pink Cream 69 on the way up. Um, just to brief you guys. Yeah. Um, and Michael, Michael, Michael Wyckoff gave me the album to listen, Chameleon, and I said, look, I, I think it's a fantastic album. I love it, but you will get problems because it sounds like Halloween Goes Bon Jovi. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then he, then he was really pissed off. I mean, he was really <laughs> for, for two or three days. And then he came back to me and said, you really think that's, that's what it is? And he said, I, I fear yes. I'm afraid yes. And that's exactly how, how, how it was accepted. Sure. Not at all, actually. So nowadays, you guys, sorry, go on. Nowadays, yeah, nowadays, like decades later, it, it is being accepted as a great album. Mm-hmm. But back in the days, the people had a lot, a lot, lots of problems with it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's almost fortunate for me to be like to have grow. You know, I'm 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 not a spring chicken, but I'm like 35 years old now. So, you know, you, uh, Halloween's first album was out to 84, like the year I was born. Sorry, the year before I was born. So it's quite useful for me to come. It's like 
I came to Halloween. Wow, you know, you were well established. Um, I can't remember which album it was because it was a long time ago when I was getting into metal in general. Um, but like, it's it's useful for me for it to have been in the past, quite a long way in the past. So I could just see it as part of the history and I knew about it going in. So it's almost fortunate to be like a younger fan of Halloween because you're not suddenly confronted by this, oh, what's this? Get excited about the album and then perhaps be disappointed by it. I just know it's there and I know it exists. You know, same with like Risk by Megadeth, same with uh, the Black Album by Metallica. They're just parts of the, the history of it now, which just to me add texture and variety to it i've I, this past week i've listened to all of your all 16 of your albums which oh. was <laughs> which was pretty hardcore listening session <laughs> <laughs> no i loved it and you know what i was actually thankful for pink bubble and uh, chameleon as well because okay. i was like oh that's a bit of variety now that here's a bit of a break something different but when yeah. you came on with Master of the Rings, it was it's like a course correction. It's mm. like it's going, ah, oh, back in, you know, back into the pudding. Like yeah. um That that was the plan, Sam. And uh fortunately it worked out, yeah. You pulled it off magnificently. Um speaking of uh, Master of the Rings, I've got a um I've got a, f- a friend well, I've got a friend slash listener, the brew from Down U. Um he wants to know specifically what is it that makes perfect gentlemen so goddamn catchy? Maybe, maybe the stupidity of the lyrics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe, maybe when you talk live, I'm I'm actually always ready to make a fool out of myself, and, uh-huh. and uh, um, with that big cylinder and uh, the the wannabe gentleman dress on stage. And uh, <laughs> I, I think it's just a party song, you know. I mean, mm. it's a, a love or hate song, and it's not love or hate because you dislike the song. No, it's love or hate because you can't. Or actually, I cannot listen to it in certain on certain days. Right. When I'm, there are certain days I don't want to listen to a song like "Perfect Gentleman," mm. but there are days I need songs like "Perfect Gentleman," yeah. and maybe that's that's why. I mean, it's a very controversial song, I think. But if you're ready for party, it's the party song, in my opinion, my humble yeah. opinion. And I'm the songwriter, so I'm not very objective. <laughs> <laughs> I adore it. I have to say that is my most listened to Halloween song of all. That's just ev- well, I, all the time on repeat. I remember how we we were actually shedding tears. Michael Michael Wyckoff and 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 I um, we've written we've written the lyrics. And I remember when we've written like I, and my wind surpassed perfume. <laughs> I'm charismatic as full bloom. I'm a <laughs> man, yes, I am the perfect gentleman. We had so much fun there. It's like. <laughs> And when when this song, I mean, it even went number seven in the German charts. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy, <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, mm-hmm. even okay, I was proud of my fellow of my fellow countrymen because I never thought that the Germans would have that much humor. So that's what they had. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing for a metal band to achieve as well, like yeah. in the mainstream charts. That's incredible. Yeah. It's exactly. It was unbelievable. But hey, yeah, uh, even even a song like uh, "Perfect Gentleman," which which was even more stupid than Dr. Steen, for example. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it had a success on on an album called "Master of the Rings," mm. which was actually not a funny album at all, you mm. know. So, but maybe that was the ball breaker. That was the the one that broke the ice a little bit because it's it tells the people we are not taking ourselves too serious. We're just doing the the music we like, and, sure. and at the end of the day, you can't give a shit about anything out there. Even if the record company tells you, do this or do that, I mean, through the last three decades, I've heard that so many times, mm-hmm. and and we just said, you know what? No, mm. because we, we don't feel like, I mean, it's uh, maybe for- fortunate, it's super fortunate not to be uh, an American band, because I know from fellow musicians there that they are nearly... Yeah, they are kind of forced to yeah. do this or that song or change this or that sound because it's not hip anymore. Mm-hmm, hip mm-hmm. records and in, in in the rock world, I mean, since rock and roll started, you have to ask yourself, what the hell should be hip? Sure. When yeah. when we're all trying to experiment and try to write songs out of our heart and stomachs, nothing mm-hmm. is hip. It's all about rock and roll, street music. Yeah, and now we're in metal, which is for me just a 
a, the brutal version of rock and roll. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and I love it. So let me do my job the way I want it. Yeah. And I don't want to listen to businessmen because business businessmen who want to tell me this sells more. I said, yeah, what at the end of the day, selling is one of the number 10 in the top tens of sure. the most important things, uh, being a rock band out of there, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, um, of, you know, you know, we've mentioned power metal. Um, many people in the press, including myself, have referred to as like, you know, a power metal band, very influential, the original, some would say. Is that a term that you embrace specifically, power metal? What do you think of the fact that that's been stuck to you? Do you see yourself as power metal or or just heavy metal? Well, I see ourselves 50-60% power metal mm -hmm. and the rest is definitely stuff we like. Yeah. And maybe the people will not like, but I, I think that made us going because you, I hope that the people listen to an album and are not getting bored. I mean, there is always a title which goes away, which is more experimental, which got different spices. And yeah, okay, you have to, you have to stay in the ballpark. I mean, that's for sure. It's not a very bright, what broad uh, path you're walking on if you, if you want to actually swim in the power metal world which we want to, mm. um, after the Master of the Rings, we made that clear, I think, mm -hmm. that there is no excursions into the pop world uh, for a whole album. But, but being aware of the fact that the biggest hits of that power metal band Halloween had been songs like I Want Out, Dr. Steen, Future World, If I Could Fly, Forever and One. Mm -hmm. These are not power metal songs. Mm -hmm. So... I think the majority of our fans would like to have 60% of definite, def, definite power metal, bang your head and brutal, speedy, whatever, yeah. always with nice melodies, sure. But I think they appreciate this or that song, which make them, yeah, get their ears free for the next power metal song, if sure. you know what I mean. So you have to have these breaks. Yeah. And these breaks, these break cut songs, happen to be hits some, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the big chance for us. Stay true with power metal, but also have a chance to bring in a broader, wider uh, audience because of these breaker songs. Yeah, yeah. Is Which it, I, um... want, I don't want to miss them, actually, even though I know sometimes they are cheesy, but I love that cheesy shit in between that brutal stuff, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. I have a saying on my show, everything tastes better with cheese. So, like... <laughs> well, that's a Scotsman speaking here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and I apply that to heavy metal. Like, the cheese tastes good to me. Yeah. Don't don't ever let up on the cheese. People might I mean, not admit it, but everything tastes better with cheese. Well, I should say, being a German fellow, man, everything... Uh, tastes better with crowd. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, hate, I hate crowds. <laughs> that would be not fair. So maybe, maybe I should say now I'm living since 23 years. I'm living in Spain. Everything tastes better with mojo. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> um, so the new album. Um, well, sorry, Tim from Sheffield had had a question as well regarding power metal. Do you listen to it much other than, you know, your own stuff? Uh, and if so, what do you make of the scene today? Well, I occasionally listen to, to uh, bands like Stradivarius or Hammerfall. Mm -hmm. But then again, they are friends of mine because we've been on tour together. And uh, with Stradivarius, Hammerfall is now getting on, on, on tour with us for 22. Sure. Uh, Hammerfall was here in my studio recording a full album for a month. So, yes, certainly. I mean, my friends, I, I, I'm interested what they do, even, mm -hmm. and, and even more because they are in our kind of water. Sure. Um, but uh, honestly, I mostly, most of the times I listen to my old heroes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, unfortunately, my, my, my very first band I call my idols was The Sweet, and it's, there's only one survivor, Andy Scott. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah, we'll never have a chance to see them live in the original lineup, unfortunately. Brian Connolly went from us like years ago. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, Kiss is still alive and going. 
even though it's only Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley in the band. Yeah. But nevertheless, I'm happy that they are still around. They're probably yeah. finishing their farewell tour, the end of the road tour in 22. Mm-hmm. I definitely will catch up one or two concerts I want to see there. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, Judas Priest. Yeah. I mean, Rob, Rob is still doing good or is doing good again. Yeah. Because, uh, we had quite a lot, lots of concerts with them where I, I was really worried that, that the man is passing away the very oh, next really? minute. Yeah. He was not in a good shape back in the days mm-hmm. and now he's recovered completely. Um, had lots of nice talks with him. Even though I know he's probably not been interested in me, but he was always looking uh, to the right of my of me, and and I'm, <laughs> I, I I was aware he's looking at my drummer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's not interested in me, even though he was sitting there like um, three or four nights after the show it was <laughs> great. There, it's like nice weather. Um, it's like open air festivals, and we had great talks. But he was always looking. <laughs> Besides of my face, and I realized, hey, yeah, it's Danny sitting there. <laughs> A little bit distracted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But nevertheless, what I wanted to say, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy who is definitely into his idol still. Yeah. Also listening stuff from back, and th- back from the 70s to, to what they do now. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, probably a bit too. Yeah, I'm not open minded enough or not interested enough. I, I don't know what I should call myself here. <laughs> Uh, even though I have to, I have to admit I'm very much into newer bands, which are not new anymore. But in the metal genre, they are sure. probably not not uh, the, the the godfathers of of metal. But yeah. for me, they were the godfathers of new styles of metal. So yeah. like Deftones, yeah, or Corn. Mm-hmm. These guys I follow simply because I want to be aware what's possible. Yeah, yeah. I, like the disharmonical stuff from 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 Deftones, uh, from time to time, I really enjoy it. Even though, don't don't be scared out there. I'll never I'll never write Deftones songs. But <laughs> uh, for me as a musician, it's it's always good to know what what's possible. Yeah. yeah. Which which spices maybe sure could, could be added without yeah. betraying our genre. But mm-hmm. still, there are spices out there which could be interesting for this or that middle part or whatever. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> just keep my ears open sure it sounds i mean is that is that kind of what happened a little bit on uh the dark ride which is one of my favorite albums of yours mm. it's a very different album um yeah. was and it came out um in the 90s uh it was it the 90s 2000 2000 yeah just at the oops tail end of the 90s uh 2000 and um i wondered if that that was influenced by the the kind of metal that was coming out around that time. Is that is yeah. that fair to say? Yeah, it's fair to say. Definitely, we we had these uh, discussions again with the record company, and this seemed to be a path we could follow. Mm-hmm. It was not too far away. Being a bit darker, try to put it into more. Um, new metal and and maybe even a little bit of grunge spices. Mm-hmm. Grunge we didn't we didn't like that much because for us that that time was over. But a little bit of new metal, um, yeah, that mi- that mixture seemed possible. Sure. If if we are allowed to have a f- uh, some speed metal songs on the album, why not? Yeah. Um, it was accepted with a lot lot of what's the right word here? Um, skepticism. Right. But yeah, in the beginning, it looked like the people will not accept it. But it went it went gold and platinum with the time. So yeah. this is that's another strange story. So you, you you release an album, it goes away from the typical formula, and it 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 just takes a few years to sure. to be accepted. But then again, I think the Dark Ride was the album bringing in all the new fans because all the skaters I knew, or my son was out there. Uh-huh. And always made a big secret out of it. Who's who his dad is? Blah blah blah. Yeah. And uh, but he was my little spy there. <laughs> <laughs> and he was always having that that smile on his face. And uh-huh. probably all his friends thought, okay, that guy is not is not really knusper in his head or something like that. <laughs> because he was always smiling when when his friends came. Oh, listen to that! It's a new Halloween. It's really nice. Nice. Um, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. That must have been a good feeling. That must have been yeah, a good yeah. feeling. Well, now he's getting shit of his old friends because they they are still like a bit 
grumbling about it. Oh, you could have said it, you know, <laughs> secret out of it and now we know blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one and of those my son, that... Sorry, my son is always repeating I well I did not know back in the days I did not know that we're going to live 23 years on this island so. <laughs> 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 it, um, it, it's one of those things as well we were talking about earlier a little bit about um, uh, that variety and again like having an album like that is a really nice kind of like diversion from yeah. the normal Halloween stuff. Yeah. And then you get back into it with Rabbit Don't Come Easy, um, which again is kind of like going back to the original sound. And I think that's what makes your discography, your catalog, um, so much more interesting to enjoy than <coughs> bands that just do one kind of music like almost one kind of song sometimes and never deviate it it gets repetitive sometimes mm. you hear bands which are critically hailed sometimes but i think it's just the same song over and over again for 11 times yeah. whereas you guys have got that you got that variety not only in your albums uh sorry not only in your songs album tracks but actually on a wider scale in your albums mm. like whole albums that sound different and i love that about you guys i really do I think as long as you're going back to track sooner or later, everything has been forgiven. Yeah. So just mentioned after the dark ride, we went back into the more normal, yeah, typical yeah. stuff. And then after the, after the rabbit album, we ever even took it further into the typical Halloween power metal. Yeah. And that's where we stayed on until now, actually. But the vari variety of the songs, it's, it's, there's, there's an easy explanation because we are, three up to five songwriters, meanwhile five. Mm. So um, there's always been three songwriters in the band, sometimes four when Marcus had his, his glorious ideas with like mm. Hell Was Made in Heaven and stuff like that. <clears throat> so automatically you have a variety because a good song is a good song. Why should I say to Marcus, oh, we don't play this song because it's it's not Halloween. Yeah. I mean, this, this, this is something I tell to a founding member of my band. Mm-hmm. If it's a great song, it's a yeah. great song. I'm gonna yeah. play it, even yeah. though it might be a little bit out of the ballpark. But I don't give a shit. It's it's a good song. I I love it. It makes goose flesh going on on my arms. Uh -huh. So and because I consider myself a normal person, I think there are many of pe many people out there who will have the same reaction than I have. Absolutely. And that's that's the whole secret behind it. Do I love it? Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you get into this job, surely. Like, that's why yeah, you do we, what you do. We all started out with hobbyism. I mean, uh, actually, nobody started out with a band uh, calling himself, uh, I'm the future rock star here. No. Yeah. I mean, we, we all started out in school bands. And, uh, yeah, I mean, sooner or later, suddenly you had more interest. There was, in, in, in my case, it was with Pink Queen. We won that. Um, it's the rock fabric in, in South Germany. There was that contest. Right. And won. And, uh, the winner became, uh, or the winner got a record contract. And mm -hmm. we were like, oh shit, uh, we got a record. <laughs> Never been in the studio. How do you do that? Uh, you know. <laughs> and suddenly you're there. Yeah. So yeah. Um, because of that, I think everybody is just into that hobby thing until now. I mean, even now, when when the business calls, mm -hmm. everybody is is pissed off. I mean, business is exactly what 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 doesn't fit with with that music and with the feelings we have. And sure. I don't know. I'm still I'm I'm over fifty now, and I'm still pissed off when I have to talk to record companies. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I can fully appreciate that. I can definitely. I'm I'm like a self-employed voice actor and i'd make audiobooks so i'm uh, i'm like i don't want to do the business just let me well, get on creating something exactly. uh, and uh, hopefully that makes me money yeah and even even more they actually they talk about stuff they don't understand mm. you know and i'm not interested in your business point of view because with whom the fuck do you think you talk i mean we're since since 20 now 30 years in the business and we've always been in some top 20s all over the world with each and every album so what the mm -hmm. what the heck do you want to tell me yeah yeah you can't yeah. really argue with that kind of history and experience can you yeah 
yep, and, and we never, the, the point is we never talked about, or this sells or that will not sell. Mm-hmm. sell. Uh, that's never been, uh, never, nev- not even once. I, 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 I remember something like that in the rehearsal room. We're not interested in that. Let, let us just do our music what, that we like. Yeah. And if it happens to be successful, yeah, hallelujah. But if not, we qu- we can't change it then, you know. Yeah, because yeah. Don't make us bloody cover acts or something sure. like that. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's speak- what they try with lots of bands out there, you know. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame yep. that they feel like they have to do it to maintain a record contract and um, not kind of be true to what they want to create. Yes. But obviously, you know, it's so tough for a band to do it full time. I can fully understand that kind of pressure and maybe desperation to be like, well, I need to be accepted. I need to be I need to do what I'm told to do so they'll still be my record label. Um, yeah. Okay. Just just for the dream of success. You yeah. Track yeah. Well. Mm-hmm. And it is exactly already the end of the story. That's that's the beginning of the end. Sure. Because that that would mean if if the, that particular record company would drop you yeah. for whatever reason, then you're on your own again, mm-hmm. and you suddenly have to come up with your own songs, which may may be the greatest songs ever written on earth, but your fans will be completely pissed off because it's not the sound that they are used to mm. when the record company told you what to do. Yeah, yeah. So and that that's all that's always the end of the beginning. Yeah, self defeating. Rather rather do exactly what you want from the beginning on. Mm-hmm. Because if that makes you big, you're there to stay forever because it's what you do. Yeah, yeah. Um speaking of your, you know, long history and the many albums that you've had success with, um, where would you personally this is a, a question from um, Andreas from Munich as well actually he said he wants to pass on his regards firstly to yourself uh, and he said Halloween is the album that got him sorry Halloween is the band that got him into heavy metal so he has a special connection with you guys and he wants to know where do you personally put um, the new Halloween album where do you rank it amongst all the ones that you've done before how high or uh, low probably not low because I think it's amazing yeah. But how high would you rank it amongst your, you know, all your um, great achievements through the last 30 years? Well, for me personally, no. Mm-hmm. For me personally speaking, it would be on on the same number one, um, like uh, I would put uh, The Master of the Rings. Sure. Because that's, it's for me personally, it's something like that, that uh, yeah, it's a deja vu kind of thing. Mm. Um but with lots of, not as much pressure, certainly, because back in the days with Master of the Rings, I had some stomach ache going on. I mean, we discussed that. Mm-hmm. Um, this time, it has no stomach ache. It's just that, that expectation. It's, it's, the expectation is so, so high every, everywhere out there and certainly in the band, inside the band as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something like a new start without being a new start. <laughs> so, yeah, but, totally. Yeah, the but, dynamic yeah. is so different, so different now. Yes. From one singer to three, Yes, that is, you know, no bands really do that. There's like Amaranth or something, there's a few, you yeah. know, but, and they've got very, you know, one is a lady, one is like a clean male singer, and one is death growls. Mm. So where if you guys have got, you know, you all do clean vocals, but in your own way. And yeah. certainly I can never think of a band, I cannot think of a band that has gone back and recruited their previous singers to be with the current you know singer and yeah. all sing on the songs on the album like it's it like you say it's almost a new start yeah. especially if this is is this what you're you're doing going forward now can you see more albums with the three singer lineup or is perhaps this just an experiment a very successful experiment well, no, because uh, that's that's why why we actually in the first place this album was called simply Halloween because mm. for everybody it seemed like a new start. Yeah. And uh, if if we talk about how how long can you do that, I think that's the last chapter of the band. Sure. So we're gonna be uh, I in a perfect world and everybody agreed. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna be in this lineup until we can't play or can't sing anymore. So yeah. let's give it another ten fifteen years. That should be that should be uh, here to stay. Um, concerning the pressure um, for Andreas in Munich, mm-hmm. concerning the pressure, 
it's that positive pressure from the back in the days from Master of the Rings without the negative pressure, put yeah. it that way. Yeah. But it's it's pressure is always it sounds like a, a negative thing. In in this way, no, that's not a negative pressure. It's a that should be a new invention for a world for a word. Mm. Positive pressure is yeah. there a word that that would that would combine that? Probably not. I, I want to say like. <laughs> like some kind of something to do with motivation mm. um you know something to do with like high i don't know ex intense motivation or something like that yeah. yeah but you know what i mean yeah absolutely yeah 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 um it, it, yeah it's amazing and i'm so happy to hear you say that as well because you know it's it is such a radical thing for a band you know, I, I think after, you know, the you'll be, you know, as a whole band, it will be getting to the age of 40 years soon. Um, and it's easy for a band that's been around that long to just be that band. And that I'm not casting any aspersions. I'm not slagging off bands like Judas Priest. I love Judas Priest, you know, Iron Maiden, etc. But they're never... They're never going to go, let's add another singer, you know? Even never though, mind. Well, Sorry? Even though Maiden did it with the guitarist. So that, True. that's one. But and there I... was, just, just to complete that, uh -huh. there was a band who tried it, Van Halen. Did they but have Van two Halen, singers? Yeah, they, they did it for two shows, and then the Diamond Dave, David Lee Roth, and, and Sammy uh -huh. Hager kicked in their teeth, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> After the, after two shows, the whole yeah. the whole dream was gone. <laughs> <laughs> but with you guys, what I mean is like they those bands wouldn't go. This is the band now. Like they mm. wouldn't go. This this is who we are now. They wouldn't evolve. And I think it's really cool that you guys are still ready to evolve in an extremely radical way. I you yeah. know like you mentioned you know the addition with the extra guitarist like Adrian Smith coming in when Bruce Dickinson got back with Iron Maiden. But I don't think an additional guitarist is as half as an extreme change or evolution as two additional lead singers. I yeah. think that's just mad. That's mad, man. You're a madman for doing it and agreeing to it. Um, whose idea was it for all this to happen? Well, actually, I remember us sitting in Tokyo with our uh -huh. a and manager up from JVC, and he was sitting down there. We're all having coffee, and he was mentioning to the band, oh, Oh, it's just great. Now, um, with Kai Hansen joining the last two songs yeah. of the Halloween show. Oh, oh, super nice, super nice. Uh -huh. Oh, and the people enjoy, the fans enjoy very much. Oh, do we have <laughs> something, do we have something that we could do for the next tour? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I was just sitting there and said, well, actually, we should, we should ask Michael Kiske if he would like to join. Mm -hmm. So that, that kept the ball, that, that, that makes the ball. Or let the ball roll. And the ball rolled and rolled for years and years to come. And uh, the management got in contact with Michael. Michael was not so hip about the idea from from beginning on because he still felt like having grudges with, with Michael Weikert. And mm -hmm. they were still like, yeah, old open wounds, blah, blah, yeah. blah. But there was, a, there was a, a certain festivals in Europe, a certain festival in Europe where Michael Kiska played with um with his um sonics um yeah unisonic uh, yeah unisonic and uh michael weikert and michael kiske met backstage right accidentally mm -hmm. and i was just looking at each other and michael after michael weikert after 10 15 seconds of embarrassing silence asked michael kiske so what did i do that you can't forgive me yeah yeah and Michael Kiske just, after another five, six seconds silence, well, actually nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, that's how the whole thing was made possible. Then yeah. finally we, we met, like, Michael Kiske, Kai Hansen, and Halloween in Karlsruhe, South Germany. And this was, everybody had that, that stomach thing going on, like, yeah. oh, what's coming next? What's coming now? And blah, blah, blah. But, it was the ice was broken in ten seconds. It was like some two 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 stupid jokes from Marcus Groskopf, and everybody was laughing his ass off. And and there nice. you go. 
And then, uh, yeah, Michael Kiske and myself, we realized during that first contact, actually, we yeah. realized, whoa, we like each other. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> Had you yeah. met before that? No, never. I met that guy once mm -hmm. in, back in 1989 in Hamburg in a restaurant where they accidentally, well, came in and I was sitting there. Michael Weikert went like, oh, by the way, that's Andy from Pink Cream and uh, Roland, you know, Marcus, you know, and this is Michael Kiske. So, hey, hello, hello. Mm -hmm. And that, that's it. Yeah. Because the press have made, like, up stories. I've, you know, seen, like, uh, you know, Andy doesn't like Michael. And I'm like, I've never seen any evidence of this. And I, you know, I was, so I was like, have they even met? Who says they've to met? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. and it, no, it just no. seems annoying the way sometimes the press are, like, trying to make drama when there's absolutely yeah, yeah. nothing there. But then again, then again. I have to say thank you for that because it kept us interesting. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> this is old saying: negative press is good press. Yeah, yeah. Because it makes people talk, and you're you're very controversial. Yeah. Unless unless you don't kill somebody out there, because that would be not controversial. But then again, <laughs> yeah. just uh, rumors rumors make it going. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and was no, there, never, we never was met. There, do you think, like between you, I know you didn't meet, but. Do you think between you and perhaps other rock stars, when there's rumors, you all know that it's actually bullshit? And like, you're all like, just let it play out. Like, we, he, he, the other person will know I don't hate them and I don't hate, you know, and, and I'm sure they'll know, you know, I know likewise that they don't hate me. And you yeah, just let it play well, out. Normally, sooner or later, you, met backstage, you meet backstage. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, as you say, I mean, you, you, you let it play out. Yeah. Let, let them do, let them do their job. Or if they think they heard something, let they, let they talk, let them talk and speculate about it. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, it never hurts. Again, negative press never hurts until it's really proven. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> But uh, in our case, we're having a good laugh now, meanwhile, because Michael Kiske never made a big secret out of it that he was being pissed off. Yeah. And and uh, and was having the greatness to say, but hey, all the best on their way. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally always praised Michael Kiske all through the decades because whenever they asked me how is it um, singing like old Michael Kiske songs, blah blah blah, I said this is the hardest job in the fucking world because it's <laughs> the great, one of the greatest singers in this genre, and I'll never be as good as him. And yeah. uh, honestly, because of that, I will not try to copy him because I, I only could be a poor copy. Mm -hmm. So I follow my voice. I follow my way. If they don't like it. I can't change it. Yeah. You know, it's the way it is. Mm -hmm. But I always praised him and uh, it would be stupid not to praise him because everybody knows he's a freaking great singer. True. True. Period. So mm -hmm. why, why should I sit here now being the new singer of Halloween and bitch about the old singer? I mean, how yeah. stupid is that? Yeah, yeah. And, and even piss off the fans from Michael Kiske, why? Yeah. Why should I piss them off? Uh-huh. It just doesn't make any sense. It's Not it's so. just counterproductive to the longevity of the band. It yeah. might get a very brief mention in the in the papers, in the press, on the websites in the later days, but like ultimately that's only gonna damage the band yeah. and future relation. And you would yeah. never have had, you know, this album possibly if, exactly. If yeah. you'd have gauged, engaged in that kind of like tabloid war. Yeah. Which would be stupid from beginning on. Yeah. I do remember, I mean, there's a big, big example, for example, of like Kingdom Come telling all the people they would not even know who Led Zeppelin is and he would never try to copy other singers, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And I think that's, that's something that's, it's already 20 years ago and it, it, it still sticks in my head because yeah. I thought, Wow, I mean, don't don't tell, don't say that. I mean, you mm. are you are a copy of Led Zeppelin, even though some songs are even better than Zepp Zeppelin songs. Yeah. For me, I yeah. loved it, but when I listen to that, I go like, "Oh, Lenny, shut up." <laughs> yeah. You know, don't say don't don't say that because it's so obvious. Yeah. But I, I, I think it, sometimes as well, an issue I have is, I don't know if this is a bad thing or whatever, but 
when I hear some uh, musician say something unpleasant, um, it colours the music for me. And so I I find it difficult to go and listen. If I perceive the musician to be an unpleasant person who bitches, I, I can't enjoy their music so much anymore. Um, and it just kind of poisons that well. So it's it's good to kind of like just you know keep a clean slate i suppose yeah. you know uh you know there's certain you know a certain country rock musician who um over the last few years has um come out with very unpleasant what i would consider unpleasant views quite far right uh, views yeah. and um you know i i loved some of his songs growing up but just can't listen to it now cuz i just hear him in my head saying really far right unpleasant xenophobic yeah it things. sticks in your head yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. so stay stay with the truth and uh, if if yeah. somebody if somebody is doing a great job tell the people he did a good job he did a great job exactly i mean that's the truth and why i i, I don't have to cut off my balls to actually praise somebody else you no. know <laughs> Exactly. Um, I, 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 I've kept you a long time, and I apologise. Um, so, Always well. <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I'll just ask as well. The pandemic is slowly fading away. Yeah. Do you, what plans do you have for touring coming up? Because people are going to be desperate to see you with this album. Well, the the whole touring stuff is already postponed two times, and then then we decided not to uh, schedule it for this. Um, mm -hmm. Spring, for example, that that sure. would be possible again, yeah. as we know now. So we scheduled everything to uh, 22. Yeah. And if I'm right, we start out in end of March in in, in 22, if everything is the way we wish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's we still crossed. Have to fingers crossed, big time. Yeah. Um, 22 would be the starting thing. Great. March. Is that world tour? Yeah, we we um, finished the European leg now. Mm. That will bring us to summer into the summer festivals, and after the summer festivals, we'll definitely do South, North America, Asia, and uh, yeah, take it from there. But not, I mean, there's a rough a rough schedule for for North America and South America. Yeah. Um, but nothing to actually promote now because sure. it's uh, you know in these days you'd rather not because you piss off a lot of people who who at the end of the day realize oh they're not coming again blah blah yeah. blah yeah but, yeah but it's a very rough schedule yeah europe is, europe is probably finished as far as i have realized sure good well it's good to know that there is something coming even if we don't know exactly uh what it is and it'd be irresponsible to plan anything yeah um, i mean too in depth europe Europe is planned, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Just hope we don't have to reschedule it for the third time. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll take it from there. Fingers crossed we believe in it. March we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll we'll be, certainly be coming to see yeah. you. This would be the United Forces package, it's called. United Forces with awesome. Hammerfall. Awesome. Yeah. Now that's some power metal goodness right there, <laughs> double bill. <laughs> well, Andy, it's been an absolute treat talking to you. I've not had this much fun on an interview in a long time. So thank you very much for living up to your reputation, which is quite big in my mind. It's wonderful. All started out with a poo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure.
Oh god, it's cold. It's so good though. Oh, oh it's good. I love you so does stream water. Uh. Oh god almighty. Wasn't that a great interview? Oh, it stinks that one. That ref the fumes. And it's not just gas, that was actual fumes reflected off my bloody um reflected off my pop filter right back into my nostrils. Ser serves me right for being a a beast, doesn't it? An uncivilized uh audio felon. Oh no, here comes another one. This is gonna stink as well. <coughs> oh god. Um Yeah, it wasn't Ah, oh, it does smell as well. That's that vegan cheese. That's that vegan cheese coming back on me from my toasty. Oh, nothing smells like vegan cheese repeating on you. The song you just heard there as well was uh, Mass Pollution from the new album. One of my, Probably my favourite track from off there, by the way. Anyway, uh, wasn't that an absolutely killer interview with Andy? Like, what a friendly guy. What a fun guy. What a warm, welcoming bloke. He made me feel like a, an old mate, an old maca that I'd just been having a Skype with, you know, that we do it on the reg or something. That into, that bit as well, the start of that, the, the poo, the flaming poo, <laughs> that was how he kicked off the call. He, he kicked off by saying, uh, oh, sorry, I'm a bit late to the interview. I had a poo. I had to do a poo in the toilet. Um, had a bit of a toilet issue with the number two, and then I was like, "Oh well, gl glad you did it. Glad you did it like in the toilet and not while we're on the 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 Skype call." And then he was like, "Well, better to do it there than that German guy what set the forest on fire by trying to <coughs> oh god damn it not again by cooking his own poo." <coughs> oh yeah, Jesus, Robert. Um, so, yeah, that, and, and like, <laughs> crazy, like, I have never, ever started an interview with any rock star, any musician of any stature talking about poo, never mind the iconic, an iconic lead singer of an iconic, incredibly influential band that is coming on for 40 years. You know, that set the template for, for an entire extremely popular power genre. You know, he Andy Derris is exactly the kind of guy that I hoped the lead singer of Halloween would be. You know, that's me smoking a massive cigar like him. Rocking up in his house in the sun, looking extremely happy, smoking a big old... Uh, cigar big old stogie and um and talking about and it's just immediately talking laughing about his own poo needs and then laughing about a forest burning down due to uh, a man setting his pooey toilet paper on fire that's exactly that is more than i ever hoped the lead singer of halloween would be i'm so delighted um Okay, it's been an absolute treat talking to you. It's good to be back. Within two weeks, I make that promise to you now. Within two weeks, we'll have another interview out. We'll have the uh, another podcast out. I'm talking to a, 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 a singer of a band at the moment about doing an interview. So it might be with her band. If not, did, you know, depending on how, when that comes about. And if not, it'll be the Epica interview. Okay. Either way, top-notch interviews come in. And I, if I say it on here, on record, that it'll be within two weeks, I've got to do it then, haven't I? I find that very useful. I've got to do it. I'm writing a novel at the moment. Yeah, I know. What, 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 like, I'm completely crap at words, as my rambles in these episodes sh sh should demonstrate. What on earth could I possibly offer uh, the literary world? Anyway, I'm writing a novel at the moment and I find it good. Um, I write for like an hour a day and I find it very good uh, to post it on Instagram. On uh, If you search for Robert J. Bailey, you'll see it in my stories there. Post it on Instagram. And then if I post it and then I, I suddenly stop posting the stuff, 
it's like I've publicly shamed myself because everyone knows. Everyone knows I've stopped writing the novel. Oh, what's he doing? He said he was going to... His New Year's resolution for two years running is writing a novel, uh, you know, writing something every night, either towards this novel or some other fiction endeavour. Right? So it's good to shame... It's good. I, 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 I don't like shame. I'm very advert, shame adverse. I'm allergic reaction to shame. So if I, if I say something publicly on the public forum, then I've got to do it. It's a good way of motivating myself because you got to go through with it. Because if I don't say it, then I'm like, no one knows I even, uh, no one knows I even intended to do that in the first place. And no one's expected, no one will see I've failed at my intention. So yeah, within two weeks, you'll have another one. If you want to support the show, either the radio show or this podcast, you can do. KO, K- Kofi's a crap URL, I've discovered. Kofi.com. Great. Lovely, lovely brand in there. Kofi.com forward slash Metal Empire. Right. You can make a one off individual donation, as some people have done. It's an absolute delight. Thank you very much. You keep me in uh, MP3s I've got to buy for the radio show. I've replaced equipment. I've replaced, uh, you know, bought a whole new traveling microphone for my on the road interviews. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you very much, guys. But um, great branding. But you would assume that's KO, you know, you'd assume that's KOFI or something. Nah, nah. KO dash or hyphen FI dot com. Co dash hyphen Wait, co... See the problem with it? If you want to tell people in audio format, on podcast format, where to donate money, should they so wish, it's ko-fee.com forward slash Metal Empire. I wish they'd just... I don't know why they didn't get Kofi. Maybe it's uh, uh, Kofi Anans <laughs> website. I don't know. In which case... Maybe you shouldn't have called it something so similar to that. Uh, but uh, if uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to say it out loud, unfortunately, you've got to go through the rigmarole of saying ko dash fi dot com, and then once you say it, it could be K- you know ko. Okay, that's it, self-explanatory. But if you say dash fee, people are going to go fee. Oh yeah, we're paying him a. It's kind of like a fee. It's a donation, but fee is also a monetary. Uh, thing that you give to someone. So F E E, right? No, Kofi F I, like fidelity, like hi fi. Anyway, if you want to give to that, you can. K O dash F I dot com forward slash Metal Empire. If you want to hear the radio show with more garbage, bollock face, toss waffle that I just verbally vomit, um, you can do. Head over to Mixcloud.com forward slash Metal Empire. You can hear loads of interviews with uh, people who I really shouldn't have access to, uh, given my level of uh, professionalism on display on each and every podcast and on each and every radio show. And you can also hear loads of great music as well. Uh, We also have listener interaction. This, uh, the radio show Metal Empire, goes out on MetalWorldRadio.com. The manager, Melissa, is an absolute superstar. She's a dream. I love her. She's an incredible person to work with. Uh, I thank her uh, for allowing me to find a home on that uh, on her station as well. And I'm glad she tolerates my absolute buffoonery upon her fine uh, broadcasting service. So you can hear that metalworldradio.com. Every Wednesday, 8 a.m. EST. If you're listening in the UK, that's 1 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon. Central European time, that makes it 2 in the afternoon. 2 in the afternoon CET. 1 in the afternoon UK time. And 8 in the morning EST, if you're in uh, Eastern Standard Time. It's been an absolute delight being back. I'm glad... I'm glad for whatever listeners are still here. After 30 weeks, I'm not going to I'm not going to kid myself. A lot of people will have dropped off. They'll think it's dead, but it's been resurrected. And I'll be honest, I'm very happy with the numbers of Bailey's bookshelf. So, you know, I'm not going to feel too bad about it, but I'm delighted to be back and doing this. Um and I hope you'll join me for the next one. 
in two weeks at the most. It's either going to be Epica or it's going to be this other band that I'm currently talking to. All right. I hope you have uh, a lovely rest of whatever it is where you are. Rest of your day, rest of your night, rest of your morning, rest of your week. I hope you have a rest of your year. I hope you have a great rest of your decade, a great rest of your century, a great rest of your millennium. I'll leave you with the truly epic, not James Bond theme cover from the latest album, Halloween, by Halloween, Skyfall. I'll catch you on the flippy dippy. Hello there, this is Andy Darius from Halloween, and you're listening to my show, Metal Empire, which I present as my comedy character, R.J. Bailey, who's basically the stupid, incompetent, childish DJ obsessed with setting his poo on fire. <laughs>